First, I would like to thank Professor Ho Junli for the invitation. Um, I will talk about the curvature flows of hypersurfaces and geometric inequalities. The theme is to understand the behavior of the curvature flows of hypersurfaces and their applications in the proof of geometric inequalities. I will cover the following topics, uh, which I divide into three parts. Uh, in part one, I will describe the curvature flows and the curvature flow method uh, for the classic uh, as a parametric and Alexander Fincher inequalities in the Euclidean space. Then in part two, I will describe the, the similar cases in the hyperbolic space, uh, where we are I'll describe the Alexandra Fincher inequalities. Then in part three, um, we will discuss the locally constrained curvature flows in hyperbolic space, which was introduced recently by uh, Brando, Guan, and Li. Now this is the part one of my talk. Uh, we first uh, recall the definition of the curvature flow for hypersurfaces. Uh, suppose we have an uh, initial smooth hypersurfaces, hypersurface sigma zero uh, in the Euclidean space, which is given by the embedding x zero. And then the uh, curvature flows of the hypersurfaces uh, is a family of embeddings x, uh, which depends on the time and uh, satisfies the time derivative of x is given by a function f times the normal vector nu. Uh, here the function f depends mostly on the principal curvature kappa of the evolving hypersurface. Some well-known examples um, of curvature flows include the following. Uh, the, for example, the mean curvature flow, uh, where f is given by minus mean curvature h. And uh, the Gauss curvature flow, uh, where f is equal to minus Gauss curvature. And we also have the inverse mean curvature flow for f given by 1 over h, and the volume preserving mean curvature flow. The geometric flow uh, are very powerful in the study of geometry and uh, topology. And uh, in this talk, we will focus on the application in the proof of geometric inequality. In this direction, there are some following uh, important results and uh, firstly, we would like to mention the results uh, by Huisken and Eminem. They applied the weak inverse mean curvature flow to prove to prove the Penrose inequality. And uh, in 2005, James McCoy applied the core mass integral preserving flow uh, to give a new proof of the classic uh, Alexandra Fincher inequalities for convex domains in the Euclidean space. Uh, Phoenix Stewart in 2008 also applied the powers of mean curvature flow to uh, give a new proof of the isoparametric inequality for bounded domain in the Euclidean space. And later by Guan and Junfang Li, uh, they applied the inverse mean curvature flow, inverse curvature flow to show that, to show that the classical Alexandra Fincher inequality also hold for star-shaped domains. And I would like, I also, um, I would like to also mention the results by Brando, Hong, and Wang. Uh, they, they used the inverse mean curvature flow to, uh, prove a parameter, to prove a Minkowski type, type inequality for hypersurfaces in the ADS, uh, Stewart chart space. Uh, in the following, I will describe the second and uh, fourth result on the curvature flow uh, proof for the Alexandra Fincher inequalities. Uh, we first start from the simplest one, the isoparametric inequality, uh, which is that for any bounded domain omega in the Euclidean space Rm plus 1, and the area of the boundary is greater than a constant multiple uh, uh, the enclosed volume to the power n over n plus 1. 
uh, here is the constant omega n is the area of the unit sphere. This inequality is sharp because the equality holds if and only if the domain is a round bone. So if for convex domains, this can be proved uh, by using the volume preserving mean curvature flow, uh, which, is, which is a flow with speed given by, by minus mean curvature plus a kilometer phi t. And here the kilometer phi t is choosing to uh, preserve the enclosed volume on the flow. Uh, they call the uh, variation or formula of the enclosed volume. Uh, we see that the phi t must be given by the average integral of the mean curvature. And so for this phi t, we can, we can um, calculate the evolution of the, uh, the area of the hypersurface sigma t and uh, see that, uh, see that the area is decreasing along the flow. Uh, th this means that the volume is fixed and the area is decreasing, so the isoperimetric ratio uh, I is now increasing along the flow. And the volume preserving flow was introduced by Huisken in 1987, and he showed that if the initial hypersurface is convex, uh, then the solution sigma t of the volume preserving flow exists for all time and uh, converges to a sphere and when time goes to infinity. So we can so we now have the monotonicity of the isoperimetric ratio and also have uh, the convergence result of the flow. Then we can apply Huskin theory and to compare the initial value of the uh, isoperimetric ratio I at the initial domain omega zero with its limit value which is a constant this, this is equivalent to the isoperimetric inequality uh, for convex domains. So from the above example, we see that the key steps to establish a geometric inequality using curvature flow uh, are the following. Uh, firstly, we need to uh, show that under some conditions on the initial data, the curvature flow converges to a model hypersurface example, the round sphere. Secondly, we need to find the geometric quantity, uh, which is the monotone increasing or decreasing along the flow. And we also need to estimate the limit of this geometric quantity. So once we have these three steps, uh, we can compare the initial value of the uh, geometric quantity I, I with each limit value, and then we derive the geometric inequality. Next, uh, we describe the uh, proof of the classic Alexander Fincher inequalities in the Euclidean space and by using the curvature flow. For convex bounded domain omega in the Euclidean space, the Alexander Fincher inequality compare different waters of core mass integrals. Uh, so in the following in corner T3, the, the left hand side is Vk and the right hand side is Vr to the power to some power and the index k greater than r. Uh, here Vk are uh, core mass integrals and in particular we have V0 is just the volume of the domain omega. Uh, with some constant m plus 1. And uh, v1 of omega is just the area of the boundary. So for k is 1 and l is 0, inequality 3 is just the isoperimetric inequality. So the Alexander Fincher inequality can be viewed as the higher order case of the isoperimetric inequality. Uh, if the domain omega uh, has a smooth boundary, we can relate to the core mass in integral vk plus 1 uh, by the curvature integral of the boundary. Uh, here, here, ek, uh, here ek denotes the case mean curvature of the boundary hypersurface. Uh, 
and which is defined as the normalized uh, case elementary symmetric function of the principal curvature. Uh, in particular, we see that uh, E1 is just the normalized mean curvature and uh, Gn is the Gauss curvature. The Alexandra Fincher inequality was proved by Alexandra and Fincher independently uh, in 1937. Then, along with the development of the geometric flow method, it is very natural to, um, and to give a new proof of the classic inequality by using the geometric flow method. Now, the first uh, uh, proof uh, was given by uh, McCoy in 2005. He applied the uh, core mass integral preserving curvature flow. And then later by Guan and Li, uh, they applied the inverse curvature flow. Uh, and they also showed that the inequality, inequality 3 um, also hold, hold for k-1 convex and the star-shaped domain. In the following, I will describe the uh, two, the two proofs by McCoy and uh, Guan and Li. Uh, because we are using the curvature flow method, we always assume that the domain has a smooth boundary. Then, uh, then we have the following variation formula uh, for core mass integrals. Uh, if we have a family of domains uh, whose boundary moves outward uh, with speed uh, function f, then the omega the, the core mass integral of the um, omega t uh, satisfies uh, d by dt of vk is given by the uh, integral of the speed function f uh, product with the um, curvature function ek. Uh, in, part in particular, we see that for k is zero and one, this formula reduces to the uh, variation formula for volume and area. Then inspired by Whiskey's volume preserving flow, McCoy introduced the following core mass integral preserving flow, uh, which is based on the, the, on the above variation formula for the core mass integral VK. So, and uh, here in the, in the flow, in this flow, uh, Mc he chose phi t to preserve v l. For this, we need that we need that phi t satisfy uh, this equation, the integral integral of the speed of the flow times the air uh, vanishes. From this, we can solve phi t explicitly. Then we put phi t in the uh, in the variational equation of v k. And we see that uh, Vk is non-increasing. So we have the preservation of Vl and uh, the monotone decreasing of Vk. This gives that the higher order as a parametric ratio Ikl is non-increasing. Here the Ikl is defined as Vk, uh, Vk over Vl to the power. And uh, uh, McCoy also showed that if the initial sur initial hypersurface is convex, then the solution then the solution sigma t converges to a round sphere. So now we have both monotonicity of the as a parametric ratio IKL and the convergence result of the flow. Uh, we can uh, so we can apply this apply this to come pair the initial value of IKL uh, with its limit value and then we obtain the Alexandra Fincher inequalities for convex domains. Uh, now I would like to say something about the proof of the uh, theory by McCoy. Uh, in the proof our key step is to show to show that the convexity of the evolving hypersurface is preserved on the flow, and uh, and also show that uh, the curvature pinching estimate is uh, the convexity uh, is equivalent to that uh, the principal curvatures are bigger are positive. This is also equivalent to that the second fundamental form is positive or definite. And uh, to show that this is preserved, 
we apply tensor maximum principle to the evolution equation of the second fundamental form. For general speed function f, uh, the evolution equation of the second fundamental form h i g satisfy satisfy this equation. Uh, when the function f uh, is just uh, the mean capture, the the red terms vanishes. So we have a simple uh, evolution equation for h i g. And from this, we can apply Hamilton's tensor maximum principle to conclude that uh, the positive, positive, positive of HIG can be preserved. And however, for general F, uh, given by the quotient in K over EL to the power of 1 over K minus L, there, there is a term um, uh, which is a gradient term of the second fundamental form, which is complicated. We we need to deal with these terms. Um, for this case, in this case, we need to apply a generalized tensor maximum principle by Ben Andrews. And now I state uh, the uh, maximum principle by Ben Andrews here. And suppose we have a symmetric two tensor alpha t, uh, which satisfies satisfies the the following parabolic type equation. Uh, here, this part is the second order part, and this is the first order part, and we have the remaining part beta. Uh, to show that uh, the, uh, that the, uh, the tensor alpha uh, is positive can be preserved, we need some assumption on the term beta. The assumption uh, is stated in this uh, inequality, uh, which means that whenever alpha um, encounters a dual, a dual vector. This means that alpha dual, dual vanishes. The terms beta must satisfy uh, beta dual, dual plus the red terms uh, non-negative. Once this inequality is satisfied, uh, we can conclude, conclude that if alpha zero is, non, is positive, then alpha t is also positive for later time. This uh, this tensor max maximum principle by by Andrews uh, is a refinement of, of um, Hamilton's tensor maximum principle uh, because recall that the condition for Hamilton's tensor maximum principle is just uh, the uh, is just uh, uh, beta and dual dual non negative. Uh, uh, we can further um, apply the tensor maximum principle to the evolution equation of um, uh, of h i g minus epsilon h times g i g to show that the curvature pinching can also be preserved. So the convexity preserved and the curvature pinching estimate and are key steps uh, in the proof of the McCoy's theorem. Now in the uh, next slide, I would like to briefly describe the method by Guan and Lin. Uh, in 2009, Guan and Lee observed that the higher order as a parametric ratio IK, IK is now increasing along the inverse curvature flow. Uh, here, the inverse curvature flow uh, has a speed function uh, EK minus 1 over EK um, times the unit outward normal. So, along the flow, the solution uh, expands outward. This inverse curvature flow. Uh, has already been studied by Gehard and Wubas in 1990. And they show, independently, they showed that for k convex and star shaped hypersurface, the solution expands to infinity and uh, properly rescaled hypersurfaces uh, converges to a round sphere along the flow. So we, we, again, we again have both the monotonicity and the convergence. So combining this, uh, we give we obtain the Alexander Fincher inequalities for k convex and star shaped domains in the Euclidean space. This condition uh, is weaker than the convexity. Uh, we will recall the definition here. Uh, for k convex, this means that uh, the, uh, the ice mean curvature Ei uh, is positive for i up to k. And star shaped means that the support function x product with nu. Uh, is positive, which means which is also equivalent to that. 
the hypersurface can be expressed as a radiograph. Now we have described the curvature flow method to prove the classic Alexander Fincher inequalities in the Euclidean space. Uh, in the in next part, I would like to describe the uh, similar uh, similar scenes for uh, hypersurface for domains and hypersurfaces in the hyperbolic space. Now, uh, let's stop here for part one.